G'day Eagles fans and welcome to this week's episode of the Inside Swoop, courtesy of Jim Beam. Scoey, welcome to the desk once more. Hello mate, how are you? I'm going okay. We don't usually mind Marvel Stadium. I know we've gone one and four there in recent time, but the four losses, they were 20 points or under which is a lot better than some of our average losing margins uh, of late. Yes. But uh, this was the exception, and it all started in that opening term. It was a 57-point quarter-time lead, and that set the scene for another one of these really disappointing away outings. Yeah, well, it did. Um, you can't win games of footy when you start like that at all. Like it's, We've heard Adam Simpson speaking about this week, and the game was over at quarter-time. Unfortunately, no matter how good you are, you can't come back from that. I think... Maybe West Coast did it against Geelong that year, when, um, but that wasn't quarter time. That was three quarter time. So, look, um, those starts are an issue. The starting midfield was quite senior. I think that would be what was worrying Simo is it wasn't uh, Elijah Hewitt, Ruben Jimby, Campbell Chester, Noah Long in there. It was senior guys. So that's the disappointing element. There is positives on the back of it, though. There were some positive things around it. Clearly, Tom Barras coming out early uh, and putting... Uh, young Brady Hoff on Charlie Kerno. That's a baptism of fire. Look, I, and again, I can I can speak to stuff like this because I've been through baptisms of fire like that when you get put on a gun, the team's not going well. As a backman and as a back line, if the midfield doesn't get it done, especially early in the game and you've got a team up and about, there's not much you can do, unfortunately. How much credit do you give the second half you know, with the Eagles winning that despite the Blues being down to just one fit man on the bench? Well, I, I, you've just got to take it at face value. You really, they, they win the second half. So that's a positive. It, with, with the way the team's going at the moment this year, the wins and losses that they've had, you need to find positive things. You, you can't roll around at the footy club every week and be negative and think about everything that went wrong because you'll never actually get better. So you need to look at the wins. You need to look at the losses as well. So they'll be examining that start. Why did it happen? Because the centre bounce stuff you know, wasn't where it needed to be. And that, I think, will be the focus. If you can get that right and start the game on even terms, young players, which there's a lot of them in the team right now, they get a bit of confidence and and they're able to go about their business a bit better. The Blues have scored 97 points from stoppage. That's the most of any team this season. And I think West Coast are ranked last in that area. They're flying at the moment, though. I think that was their, their fifth straight win over 50 points, and they're the only third team in AFL history to do so. Mm. And despite them having three or four good players out, we've got plenty, but that's uh, red-hot form. Yeah, I know we speak about West Coast a lot and, and, and what's going on here, but... Funnily enough, that is the audience. Yeah, yeah, I know. How many but, Carlton fans But you can't well. underwrite what Carlton did. They've got a huge injury list, and what they've been able to do in the last six weeks has been really impressive, so... That's what I mean. I know we speak about West Coast and what West Coast did to make this happen, but what Carlton did, you know, if you look at what they did through the middle of the ground with the players they had out there, you've got to be impressed. And to a certain point, West Coast can look at what they're doing, whether it be system, structure, belief, whatever it is, and take something out of it. I would hope that West Coast players played in that game and and really learnt something uh, by playing against some of the players they did. These starts on the road are disastrous. It's 32 goals to five. In the, first, in the last four away games. I think in the first eight to 10 minutes, the Eagles only touched the ball 10 times and only once in the fourth half on the weekend against the Blues. Oscar Allen spoke about what the review was more focused on during Coast to Coast this week. Let's have a listen. To be honest, we didn't um, focus on that at all. We just focused on the first quarter. Like We're looking for growth and how do we get better. So we just reviewed the first quarter and how do we lead aside put the game to bed within 25 minutes. So that was what our review was focused on. We had some good open, honest conversations. Uh, no punches were pulled, and it was what we needed to do. So um, a great opportunity this week, like a, a great opportunity, not to just win, but to play footy the right way, and I'm super excited for it. So the latter will say, Scoey, this is the best opportunity for a much-needed win to break the 16-game losing streak. Ruse at home, but nothing is a certainty at the moment in this comp. Well, no, certainly not, especially um, with the way the club's been going. So... Uh, yes, very winnable game. As Oscar said, you can't win games when you start like that. So the, the focus for the club would be starting well. Uh, if you're playing any team, whether they're better than you or not, you need to start well. Um, I, I remember sort of times through my career, we had certain uh, modes we would go to at the start of games. So you can, you can start in a more aggressive fashion um, that, that helps you take the game on more, basically. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see that from West Coast, being aggressive. You don't want to rock up and, and just hope it happens, hope you get the, hope you get it done at the contest. You want to take it to that team. Now, the Kangaroos haven't been going well either, so it's whether or not 
the West Coast, you know, especially in the midfield to start the game, it always starts there. If you if you, you want to get on top in games, you need to be aggressive and physical in the middle. So that it'll be it'll be straight on the midfielders to start the game. If the Eagles win this game, they're still 18th position on the ladder. What do you say to fans that uh, might come to you in the street and say we should be losing games like this to perhaps more ensure the first pick goes the way of this club? Uh, I would I would say that when you're in a footy club. Draft picks are literally the last thing on your mind. So whether or not you have pick one, pick two, pick 10, pick 18, it doesn't matter until the end of the season. That's when you start considering what you're doing with the draft picks. You don't start planning for draft picks, who you're going to pick, what's going to happen in season. You play to win and you plan to win. So last week, they would have been planning to beat Carlton. Now, they don't execute it at all. Far from it. But the plan, the talk in the locker rooms, the everything to do with the game is about winning that weekend of footy. That's why, that's why footy is so great. And why I think, although fans may not love it, it'd be a pretty positive environment still at the footy club. Yes, of, of course, you not you don't like rocking up and losing every week, but you, you don't have any option other than to move on from what's happened. You can't just, you know, well on what's gone on in the past. You need to, you need to keep moving because it's either a five, six, seven day break to your next opponent. So, um, yeah, that, that, that's what I would say. It moves pretty quickly in footy land and draft picks are the last thing on your mind. Make sure you get along, fans. Sunday afternoon, the weather could be clearing up after an absolute shocker of a wet week. You can grab your tickets to this game or the next couple of home ones against the Crows and, of course, the RAC Derby. Tickets on sale now through Ticketmaster. Don't forget, you can also boogie up a storm for the AGL dance cam. Scully, you just shelve that. I've seen your moves. You absolutely no chance to win this one. What, what, uh, what would you actually provide? I've seen, that, I've you seen your moves and they're dog meat. What would you provide to Got that? Got plenty of them. But oh other fans God. out there, they, scary. if they cut a rug well enough, they actually get upgraded to the field club. Didn't know this. They go into the field club where it's free everything and amazing seats for the second half. They pull them out of the seats. Yeah, so there's That's amazing right. prizes on offer. That's really good. You'll be on the boundary line you know, for the rest of it. I can tell you that much. Okay, great. The CEO, Trevor Nisbet, he chatted about the overwhelming support from the loyal fans that's continued throughout this 2023 season. Achieving 100,000 members again has just been unbelievable. Our support has been fantastic. Our members have just stuck and so have our fans. I mean, they've, they've been terrific and hopefully they'll see improved performances in the last five games of the year and take some heart into next year. I think Adam mentions it regularly. I mean, we, we are in bewilderment sometimes when you think we haven't played well and things haven't gone to script off the field as well with regards our injuries and other things but our members have probably understood it as well as anyone well i mean it's impressive isn't it i would say the the most impressive part is the uh, attendance so we had a hundred thousand members that's awesome but people still rocking up and coming to games you don't you don't have to come to games it would it would be silly i guess to be a member and have a seat and not come to games but you don't have to but People are still rocking up. I'm, every, I'm there every week on the boundary. You can see there's still passion there. So even though it's been a difficult year, um, I'm sure the club's really supportive and, and, and thankful for the support. As for selection, it's uh, Gov, TB and Yo. They all need to get through training in order to get a, a call up this week. But it's going to be the skipper who sits this one out. So Luke Shuey, another devastating hamstring tear. Heartbreaking and frustrating, certainly the words that come to mind. What's the way up at the end of the season now look like, Scully, for this club legend? That's good. First of all, it's good to hear Yoey's in the mix. I hadn't really heard too much about him. I, I'd wonder sort of what, what his status was. So that'd be a good three ins, wouldn't it, Gov, TB and, and Yo, to this, this game. Um, look, for Luke Shuey, like, you, you just got to speak realistically about it. He's had some soft tissue injuries. Last year, he played 17 games, which is, um, you know, you want to play 23, but 17, I would say, is pretty good. You'd take that. So... Can't remember exactly how many he's played this year. I reckon it's nine-ish. So, look, if he happened to play the last three games, you're getting half the games out of him. So speaking realistically, that's below what you need. Um, you can't paint it in a better light. He would know that. Um, he's, he's his own biggest critic. He, he works his absolute butt off to get his body right. And when his body lets him down, just put yourself in that position if you're an elite player, your elite worker, whatever your job is, and you're the, one of the best in the business. Because when we've seen him on the ground fit, he, he's still one of the best players on the ground. Was that one of the biggest carrots that he's dangling in front of himself, that he hasn't lost anything when he's out there firing? Well, it's a carrot, but it's also a, the frustration. If, you, if you're dwindling away like a Schofield and you think, <laughs> right, you know, t there's enough's enough. I've had enough mentally and physically, yeah, I'm about the mark, but, you know, I'm going to go downhill. He, he can still match it at his fittest. So 
I can just imagine that'd be an incredibly frustrating place to be because you know if you can get your body right, you can still do it. But the counter argument is, well, you're not getting out there to do it. So it, it just leads for a really difficult decision, both from him and the footy club, um, which I know all parties will be, you know, um, being realistic about it. You, you can't, unfortunately in footy, respect for players and what they've done in the past and what they mean to the club it actually need that needs to be removed and you need to make the best decision for player and club and and that's about it it doesn't really matter what's happened in the past um norm smith medalist he's just been a gun of the footy club for a long long time so that's all great but unfortunately right now the, the decision will need to be made what's best and that might be luke shuey being at the club and his leadership's needed or it might be him he's done at the end of the year i mean it can go either way right Fellow Victorian and midfielder Campbell Chesser, who strung six games of footy together in a row, which is the most he's done at top level after heavy injury interrupted a couple of years. Great to see him front the media and talk about Shuey's importance, not only on field, but inside the four walls. I think he's one of our real powerhouses in the midfield and a real leader for me individually as well. When I get him to the club, he, um, being from Victoria as well, he's been a really good mentor for me. And yeah, I think as you can see out in the field, I think it was only a few weeks ago, they really led the charge for us against St Kilda. And yeah, I think he's definitely still got it. He's a very good player and very important for us. So um, I hope he is yeah, back playing next year or in the coming weeks. Yeah, I think he's a very good leader. He still possesses every leadership quality I think he has or that I've heard of in his time at the club. You like to look at what you've seen from Chess in the last couple of weeks? Yeah, I have. Um... It's, it's interesting, like, you... I know we expect a lot out of these young kids, but, but realistically, um, I think he missed some footy in his junior footy. He's missed his entire first year. This is like his first year, right? So I just have to think back to all of my teammates and myself, and in your first year, what do you really expect? So he's starting to show some consistency, which is, you know, that's great. He's pretty much all you can ask from a young guy. There's not many guys in the competition that can take it on from the get-go and dominate games. So I've been impressed. Well, on that topic then, it's Jinby's end of his first season, 17 games in. How impressed were you and where does that rank amongst some of the best first years in recent club history? Oh, really impressed with the boy. Um, loved how he's gone about his business. He, you can, you can see that he has the reliability and consistency factor in his effort and intensity. But what I don't think we've seen is his athleticism as a player. I know at junior schoolboy footy and, and probably state league he was played off a halfback flank and he was a real runner and a carrier we saw little bits of that in his first year I think with a, a fuller squad I think we could see a bit more of that we've sort of seen him inside do you think he'll have less CBD time next year yeah, and the year I, think after? That, I think that would be a positive thing it would mean that there's more depth through that midfield so um I wouldn't be surprised if we see that but to, to summarize it look he, he's had a great first year where's that rank like Jack Darling was very good in his first year. He was, he had a man's body when he got to the footy club. Andrew Gaff was a super sub in his first year. Uh, but As was, good a body? But was very, <laughs> I didn't mention his body. <laughs> had a Steve Bandy type rig. Uh, but he used to dominate coming off that sub position he was built for. He's a runner. Um, but there's not too many others, to be, to be frank. Like you think about some of the best players at the footy club right now. Jeremy McGovern, he didn't play for about five years. <laughs> Tom Brass didn't play in his first year. Luke Shuey missed his entire first year with OP. Shannon Hearn played about two games. Like, there's not many guys that come in and dominate from the start like Jimby has. Um, hopefully it's not out of school, but I think in a better team, he goes very close to winning the NAB Rising Star. Samo petrescu seaton he cops the two weeks on the sideline for his second dangerous tackle offence this season. This rough conduct charge, again against Alex Chincotta, that's freaky. The victim has doubled up. I mean, it's not a good thing, is it? But it's no. rare, I would say, to get done twice in the same season for the same offence yeah. for the same weeks against the same <laughs> player. It's like, you have to laugh sometimes. So hopefully Alex is going okay, first and foremost. And um, yeah, I, I, the, the sling tackle, um, I know it's been a hot topic this year. Unfortunately, the one with Samo on the weekend, that, that is a two-weeker. Um, unfortunately, you can't sling players and smash their head into the ground. I think it's quite clear. The ones that have been difficult are the ones where, he, you know, has his head here, does his head not, has his hand out, has his head... That was literally the definition of a slinging tackle, which is why the club doesn't challenge it. It's AFLW team photo day today. And, uh, is it? Skipper Swanee, she's taken place uh, in his, her fifth photo day. She's going to be tossing the coin on the weekend as well. Nice. We had Jay Britton running around as the roaming reporter, so some video content incoming in the next day or so. You normally took the mantle of this one, Scoey. So I used how to did, like that. Did you? How yeah. did you find it, and how were the teammates' behaviour on the day? Well, I mean, photo day is 
you can see who cares about this one. And so that there won't be a haircut or um, new hair the day before. It's usually about a week out. So I would say prime time, maybe, maybe four days out. So prime time peak hair isn't the day after you get a haircut. It's about four days post. They had so, one mirror in the Subi locker room that was just jam-packed with a line, like, minutes beforehand. Yeah. It was very popular, wasn't well, it? Well, there used to be lines in the gym, blokes doing push-ups <laughs> when I was... You know, there's a few bicep curls happening. Um, I, I think it's enjoyable. It's a bit of fun. Um, and, uh, yeah, it'll be good to see how the girls go. Cool. The memberships uh, can be purchased as well. So the season's just around the corner. Contact the club. You can go to the adult or junior, and you get a Superstore voucher when you sign up. That's it. Inside Swoop, courtesy of Jim Beam. Scoey, till next week, let's hope we're talking about some W's with you. I'll look forward to seeing your dance moves. Because you said I'm on the boundary. Where will you be? In the field club mm. with the win. <laughs>